Happy Halloween, everyone. And uh, welcome and thank you for spending uh, part of your October here with us at uh, Galaxy Infinitum as we uh, gear up to uh, celebrate All Hallows' Eve in a mere handful or two of days. Tonight I'm going to be talking about and sharing with you my collection of scary story records that were promotional tie-ins uh, for Honeycombs and Alphabet Serial in the uh, 1970s. Uh, these were cardboard records uh, that were on the back of the cereal box and you could uh, cut them out and uh, then you could play them on your record turntable uh, much as uh, this one is right here as an example one of my original ones that uh, we got back in the 1970s uh, they had a very thin coating of plastic on the, uh, the car surface of the cardboard and the uh, grooves of the recording that were pressed into this plastic and you could play it on your turntable um, they were notoriously skittish and in fact you had to press your own uh, hole into the record after you cut it out or otherwise it would teeter crazily on the spindle that's an inside joke for you mighty wind fans there and um, and uh, they had uh, not the greatest audio fidelity in the world uh, you know, as they were, and, and they typically, for the most part, would uh, not last very long, and they weren't designed to. The plastic would become brittle and break off and chip away. The cardboard itself had a tendency to warp and, and uh, you know, fold up, rendering it unplayable. Um, and uh, these cardboard novelty tie in records dated back to the 1950s at least. Um, one of the early ones was was a serial tie-in again uh, with a ser I don't remember what serial it was, but uh, they had a, uh, Disney characters that tie-in with Disney and Donald Duck and Goofy singing songs on on the records. Now some people uh, mistakenly refer to these these cardboard discs that were on the backs of cereal boxes as flexi discs, and this is actually not what that is. This is an example of a flexi disc. Now a flexi disc. Is, is actually a thin sheet of vinyl that is then pressed with the recording. Uh, it's a little bit more high quality and a little bit more durable than the cardboard ones. Uh, but once again, they were novelty tie-ins that were usually typically primarily as promotional tie-ins. This one, for example, is from uh, the Bloom County book, Bloom County Bootleg, and is a single for Bill the Cat's band, uh, Billy and the Boingers. Uh, you stink, but I love you, and uh, I'm a boinger. And uh, there's there's a lot of these around. Um, they got sent typically with magazines. The uh, the flexi discs did, because they would actually, you know, come attached into the spine of the magazine. You need to tear it out. Uh, the uh, these uh, cardboard uh, cardboard records are pretty rare. As you would imagine, they were usually mostly used by kids, and would generally get roughed up and be, you know, destroyed in a matter of weeks, if not days. So these are pretty rare. So yeah, as I was saying, these are not the greatest audio fidelity in the world, um, uh, even when they were brand new. Uh, they were barely above Edison cylinder in quality. They had kind of a uh, raspy, uh, muddled sound. Uh, it was almost as if the needle was was actually rubbing against the cardboard and giving a rasping, <sighs> like you'd actually hear the uh, the cardboard scraping it against the needle. And that was part of the appeal of them uh, for me as a kid. Uh, they had a mysterious, otherworldly quality, almost like a secret transmission, especially in the guise of spooky stories for Halloween. And uh, there was a magical, primitive quality. Uh, to these records akin to using two tin cans with a string uh, to make a telephone. And, uh, and these were, I believe, tie-ins that did come around Halloween, and uh, appropriately so. And I remember uh, it was very exciting uh, as a kid getting these. I loved, I loved getting them and going to the grocery store and the whole ritual of going to Herb's, our, uh, our local uh, neighborhood grocery store, and uh, you know, finding the boxes and seeing the the, the uh, you know advertising on the boxes for the spooky record on the back, sc uh, spooky stories. Uh, you know, getting it, looking at it, getting the box, looking at it, trying to figure out which ones they were. 
uh, and, and collecting as many as possible. And uh, they did, over the years, three, as best as I can determine, three different series of these on honeycombs and alphabet cereal. Now, the ones I knew the best and were my favorite were the uh, Spooky Stories, which we're talking about today. But there were tons of other promotions. There was like Archie's, the made-up band from the cartoon comic strip. They had a bunch of recordings that would be on different, like Alphabets, I think, was one. And as you'll see from the images um, that, I've, that I've compiled, there was even a Kiss cereal. I think it was called Kiss Crunch. They had a record on the back. Um, so there were tons of different ones that were out there. Uh, Frankenberry, Count Chocula, they had, you know, Booberry, they had some records. Uh, but the ones that I liked were the, um, you know, the spooky, the al Honeycomb Alphabet Spooky Story ones. I don't remember exactly what years they were from, and I couldn't find out in my research. I know only one specifically that my favorite uh, record, which we'll get to in a minute, was from 1978 and was specifically on Alphabet's cereal. Now, uh, hard information on these records is uh, pretty sketchy, but the best I can tell, there were three different series of these things, each with three different stories that you could collect. Uh, the first one had, first series was The Haunted House, The Ghost in the Attic, and Sounds of the Unknown. And uh, second series was Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Miser's Gold, and The Hitchhiker. And the third set I found even less information on. I have some examples of it here. Uh, these are two of the records I got back in 1978 off of the uh, actual back of them. These are these are mine here, and uh, these are actually both the same story. Uh, and uh, one I don't, one I got, and then I decided to try to cut it as a circle for an actual record effect, and that actually makes it less playable because the edge begins to tear off a lot sooner. And um, the best way to do it is to cut it in the square here so that the uh, plastic stays intact longer. Um, but this series that, I, that I've been able to find out, the best I've been able to find out is that there were three stories, uh, one called Lonely Lonely or possibly the um, Forbidden Corridor, which was a version of the um, the old, uh, it was, you know, in a dark, dark woods, there was a dark, dark house thing. Um, and that could possibly be one or two there. There's some conjecture that seems like that maybe the name of it was, of the Lonely Lonely was the Forbidden Corridor, or there might be another recording that was called the Forbidden Corridor. Uh, I said also, also saw one reference that there was maybe possibly, it was actually just a reprinting of the uh, Headless Horseman, Legend of Sleepy Hollow one. Uh, and then there was uh, this one, which is my favorite, which was um, the trailer from space, or the mysterious trailer from space, which you can see here, the eponymous trailer up here. I'll show uh, an actual Im image of it there on this, uh, for you to uh, ponder. Now, um, many of these uh, recordings for the spooky tales were... Uh, made by uh, a guy named Wade Denning, who was a composer, a trumpet player, uh, and an arranger, and it was perhaps best known for uh, creating the Maxwell House coffee pot jingle. That was him. Uh, but he also did um, children's records, uh, and uh, uh, amongst the children's records he did was a uh, record called Famous Ghost Stories with Scary Sounds, uh, which had 10 or 12 different stories that were either adaptions or originals he had adaptations or originals he had written adaptations like Telltale Heart or Legend of Sleepy Hollow and then other original ones he wrote like The Hitchhiker um, etc. Now three of these recordings were utilized for these spooky stories namely <clears throat> The Headless Horseman, The Hitchhiker and uh, Miser's Gold. Miser's Gold is here, uh, and is also the other one that I had have from the original that I had from the actual record back from, from back in the day. And, uh, and then I have since collected through eBay three others uh, that I had never previously had, uh, which are Sounds of the Unknown, right here, The Hitchhiker, right here, and then this one, uh, from this other set, you can tell the sets apart by the different art that's on them. 
And this one is, so this one is Ghost in the Attic. And these I've collected on eBay. And you'll hear them here uh, as separate videos. I'll post different videos for each one of these, all five of these uh, records. Now back to the, um, this, this series here, the uh, third series from 78, which has my favorite, The Mysterious Trailer from Space. And um, now I could find no evidence of, of this particular story and recording existing anywhere but here on this Alphabets record. Uh, unlike the Wade Denning uh, recordings which exist on an actual record from Pick, uh, Pickwick Records, um, this one is just not anywhere that I can find. Uh, it's, a, it's an utter mystery. Uh, there's barely any even reference to it anywhere at all, even as being an Alphabets record. Uh, there's a couple of recordings of it up on YouTube, uh, uh, but very few mentions of it elsewhere. Um, so it is, it is kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't sound like the way Denning, because you can tell the way Denning's apart, uh, and when you listen to him, you'll tell it's just the one guy doing all the, the voice work. It's essentially like he's telling a campfire story, uh, and he's assuming voices as he narrates it. Um, and there's some music and sound effects. The Mysterious Trailer from Space is more elaborate, has at least four voice actors, uh, uh, music cues, effects cues, and it's kind of a more complicated story. And uh, I would love to find out where it came from. Uh, if anybody ha who happens to be watching this has any information, uh, enlighten me, please, because uh, I would love to find this. It, I can't believe that it only existed on this Alphabets record because it seems, you know, such an elaborate production that it had to have been taken from something else. It had to be, and I just can't find any evidence of it. And, um, but, uh, and I would love to find out where it came from, but nobody on Earth uh, seems to uh, have any uh, information about it. And uh, the other records are fine, uh, nice and charmingly spooky, but this one really fired my imagination as a kid with its tale of secret messages and rocks and aliens vibrating on a different level of existence. Uh, so much so that I uh, inspired a screenplay I wrote in uh, 1994. And it is, it is puzzling to me that I, I, I can't find any evidence of this story, this spooky story existing anywhere else other than on the backs of the alphabets. And then only a handful of references to that, unlike these other recordings, which have plenty of evidence for them. Uh, it, is, it is strange. Uh, it's as if like the alien message in the ancient stone, not meant for us. It has been erased from our collective consciousness, except for us few anomalies who remember. Boston scientist Tori Callahan and his friend Rick Hill are flying in Rick's airplane. Look, Rick, there on that mountain. Those rock formations seem to spell the scientific formula. Well, I'll be. Those formations are thousands of years old. What's it mean, Tori? I don't know. I never saw a formula like that before. There's a meadow. We'll land and camp for the night. Those rocks? Oh, why, they've been up there for as long as I can remember. And I've been here for 80 years. Another glass of lemonade? Thank you. Good closing. Just can't understand this television. My channel won't come in at all. All I get this channel one. Where's that from? Russia. That's what's funny. There isn't any channel one. Up there next to the rock, a trailer. Hmm. Wonder where that came from. 
Then, later on that evening... Rick, wake up! Huh? The train on the mountain, it's blowing! What's that? It's coming out of it. A long beam of light. Only it's, it's moving. It, it, it's reaching out to the rocks we saw that, that spell out the formula. The light is picking up the rocks. Don't look back at the trailer. There's another beam of light. A brighter one. It's coming right, right for us. Corey. Rick, Rick, is that you? I Rick. thought it was you. Is something trying to talk to your brain? I, I'm being lifted. We're being pulled inside the trailer. Don't be afraid. We are beings just like yourselves. But we are vibrating at a different level of existence. Eons ago, we left this formula for Earth people to discover when they were ready. Now, you have discovered it. But the rest of your kind is not ready. This universe is only a bubble made of space and time. Our formula could be used to destroy it all. We are wiser now, and we are removing it until Earth is ready to take the responsibility for it. But what will happen to us? You will forget everything. The formula, the rocks, this experience. What happened? What are we doing here on this mountain? I don't know. Rick and Tori have forgotten everything they ever knew about the mysterious trailer from space. <laughs> <laughs>